Hi, so Manor asked a question on the factors affecting the rate of enzyme controlled reactions tutorial. And the question was about pH and does it permanently denature an enzyme or can uh, an enzyme that's been exposed to a, a pH that's not its optimum return to being functioning? Well, it totally depends. If it's just a mild pH change away from the optimum, let's say the optimum is pH 7, just for simplicity here, and then we're going to say make it pH 8, it's going to be non-optimal, but it's probably not going to denature our enzyme. So what would really denature our enzyme is if we put this in a really strong acid, maybe in the stomach, pH 1.82 is some, more or less what the acidity of the stomach is, that might denature the enzyme if the optimum is 7, because what you're going to how you would know in the exam is they're going to link this to the internal bonding. If all those excess protons that are around in an acid, so you've got loads of protons, if they're going to start getting into our protein and start causing reactions to take place and breaking down the bonds which hold the shape of the protein together, if those bonds are permanently altered, the enzyme is denatured forever. It cannot go back to its original shape and its shape, obviously the active site in an enzyme, the variable region of an antibody, is completely uh, essential to its function. If it's just a mild uh, variation away from the optimum of the pH, then it will start distorting those bonds probably and it won't be as effective. The rate of reaction will go down, but if the if the pH is restored to the optimum, then it will go back to being able to functioning enzyme. So a little bit of dependency on the question. However, it will always be linked to the internal bonding, the hydrogen bonds, the ionic bonds, and the disulfide bridges. If those are permanently changed, then the protein will lose its shape and its shape is essential to its function and therefore it will be permanently denatured.